Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Feels so good to be inviting you into Unit 2, where we're going to study the chemistry of biology. But real quick, a round of applause. A round of applause for you guys. You've done a great job so far here through the first month. You did a good job getting trained in how the flipped classroom is going to operate, getting retrained into some basic science information, kind of the who, what, when, where, and how of science, scientific practices, all that good stuff. Okay? Just a real quick round of applause, congratulating you on finally getting to this point. I'm so excited, so excited. We get to start with, finally, a little bit of biological information, and I hope you are too. Okay? So exactly what are we going to study in this unit? Well, we're going to study the chemistry of life, hence the title of our unit, the chemistry of biology. We're going to look at how atoms interact with other atoms to form molecules, and how those molecules interact with other molecules to form some of the most basic structures that help to sustain life at the cellular level, okay? Um, we're going to look at two major concepts in this video, kind of knock them out. And speaking of major concepts, make sure you check out those major concepts at the top of the Unit 2 page at Nemaha Valley Science, our classroom website. Use those major concepts to guide your learning, okay, your knowledge gain through this unit. Right? You should be very familiar with the major concepts. That's the stuff you need to learn. So, the first two major concepts are all about atomic structure, atomic bonding, and a little bit about energy, okay? We're going to knock those out here in Lesson 1 by talking about three specific things. We're going to review a little bit about the atomic structure, but we're going to have a special emphasis on electron energy levels. We're also going to look again at the periodic table of elements, okay? Check that out one more time. Finally, we're going to look at ionic and covalent bonding and how elements interact with each other to kind of get to be like something, all right? And how bonding is how they get to be like that thing they're trying to be like, okay? We'll get to that a little bit later here. So let's get started. In general science, we talked about and we learned what makes up stuff. So what does make up stuff? Matter. Matter makes up stuff. We've got several different states of matter, and we studied how there are three states, solids, liquids, and gases, that exist here on planet Earth, okay? Um, so what makes up stuff? Matter makes up stuff. If something's composed of matter, it has mass, all right? And uh, matter exists as a solid, a liquid, or a gas, depending on how much energy is present in that state of matter, all righty? So what makes up matter? Well, we know this as well. We know that atoms make up matter. And we know that atoms are composed of three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The positively charged protons are located in the nucleus, or the center of an atom. The neutrally charged, or no charged, neutrons are also located in the center, or nucleus, of the atom. We know that the protons and neutrons make up the majority of the mass, so they house the majority of the matter for an atom. And we know that the third subatomic particle, the negatively charged electrons, zip around and orbit around the positively charged nucleus. Those electrons are housed in what we call the electron cloud. When similar atoms get together with similar atoms, so atoms that are the same, they form elements. We've got a big table of elements. Each one of these elements has its own unique physical and chemical properties. Why? Because they have different amounts of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The elements that we're going to focus on with this first lesson are over here towards the far right. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. We call these guys the noble gases. They're going to be important to us because everything else, all these nonmetals, these light blue elements, all these metalloids, these light purple elements, and all of these metals, these dark blue elements, all of those guys are yearning, they're striving to be like these noble gases. Now, what about the noble gases are they so infatuated with? Well, it's the fact that these noble gases have eight electrons in their outermost energy level. They have balance. They're not very reactive. So all these other guys, all these other elements are constantly fighting and working with one another to find that balance. And that balance is created by bonding. Before we get to bonding, though, let's look at how some of this bonding can occur. And that information 
um, can be made sense when we look, can be made sense of when we look at the atomic energy levels of an atom. So in here in the center, you have to forgive me for this little air here. I've got plus. This should be a zero. So this centermost circle right here in our diagram, that's the nucleus of an atom. All right, that's where the protons and neutrons are housed. The electron cloud has many different levels or shells, areas where certain electrons hang out at. Now, really close to the nucleus, the bond between the electrons and the protons, the natural attraction is very strong. But the further you move away from the nucleus, the less and less strength of that attraction exists. Okay? Um, we've got different levels that these electrons hang out in. The first level, two electrons can be there. The second level, eight electrons can be housed in there. The third level can have up to 18. The fourth level up to 32. The fifth up to 50. More and more, oops, more and more as we go further and further out. So, the math behind that, N, represents the level we are trying to study. You square the level, you multiply it by two, and that's how many electrons can be housed in that energy level. Now, what's this got to do with bonding? Well, when we've got electrons in an outermost level, and there's not many of them, and especially if they're far away from the nucleus, then that attraction is weak. And another stronger, more positively charged element can come by and snatch those electrons, all right? Or an element could voluntarily give those electrons away. It all just depends, okay? But I wanted to show you a little bit about electron levels here because it's going to help us when we start talking about bonding. So we're always working to be like these noble gases, okay? Elements are constantly under the pursuit, constantly pursuing balance. They're trying to find balance here. They bond with other elements in two ways, ionic or covalent bonding. First one, ionic bonding, typically results in weaker bonds. The two elements or two or more elements that may be working together here are usually metals and nonmetals. Ionic bonding is a giving and or taking away of electrons. When these elements bond, they form compounds. These compounds have brand new chemical and physical properties. Covalent bonding, that is a stronger bond than ionic bonding. Why? Because they're not giving and taking electrons. Okay? They're actually sharing electrons. The new substance that is formed from a covalent bond between two or more different elements is called a molecule. That new molecule like an ionically formed compound, has a brand new set of chemical and physical properties as well. Elements that usually take part in covalent bonding are typically non-metals. So that does it for this video, okay? That's the short end of uh, some of the information you need to have down in your head to understand atomic bonding and atomic structure. Now, there is another video out there, and it's an example slash how-to video for the activity that you're going to complete in class over Lesson 1. What do I want you to do, though, for your note requirement for this video? I want you to do what I call a WSQ. I took this from another teacher offline. I want you to watch the video, hence the W. I want you to summarize the video with four sentences, hence the S, and I want you to write two questions, hence the Q. Now, these questions could be um, questions that you still may have, or uh, let's say you understood everything from the video, then I would want you to write two questions that you would ask a peer or somebody else that watched the video um, that they should be able to answer if they watched it. Okay, so like questions a teacher would ask you to see if you did what you were supposed to do. Alrighty, so I want you to do a WSQ for the note requirement for this video. You can submit it to me online electronically. You can type it up in an email and send it to me or through a Google Doc, share it with me. Or you could write it down on a piece of paper and show me in class. Now, I said there was another video out there, and it goes hand-in-hand -hand with the atoms, elements, and bonding um, worksheet slash note sheet, okay? You do not have to do this, alrighty? But I do highly recommend it, because in this video, I go through a couple new terms and one new method of diagramming atomic bonds. So if you're going to be able to complete the class activity that goes along with Lesson 1, which is the Atomic Structure and Bonding Worksheet, you need to watch this example slash walkthrough video, okay? Um, I'll make sure that I help you understand some of the new terms and also show you how we do the diagramming 
to show atomic structures and also atomic bonds taking place. Like I said earlier, the activity that you'll do in class uh, deals with atomic structure and atomic bonding, and it goes hand in hand with that example video. Okay? That's it. Do you have questions? Awesome! I hope you do! I want you to have questions. Okay? I want you to have questions. I want you to ask them inside the classroom. We are officially now in the true method of the flipped classroom. So you better have questions. If you don't have questions, you're trying to fly under the radar. Not good. I want you to have questions. I want you to ask. We'll have class time to do that. That does it for this video. Make sure you get your WSQ done. Okay? A deadline grade will be attached to that. All right? Make sure that you uh, check out the example video. Okay? And uh, go ahead and print off the atomic structure and bonding worksheet. Get a jump start on that if you want to. Or just wait till class. I'll have some paper copies in. Okay? But that's what we got. See you later.